Hey everyone, welcome. Come on in. We're going to get started in just a moment. Uh, you're joining us for Making Your School Something Special with Rushton Hurley. Go ahead and get settled in the hey YouTube. Hey everyone, welcome. Come on in. And go ahead and introduce yourself in the YouTube back channel. On the right-hand side of your screen, you can pop out that chat. We will archive this and we'll archive the chat for all of your great ideas. Uh, but come on in and let us know where you're from, uh, your Twitter handle if you'd like to share, uh, and what you teach. And Rushton's in our back channel as well. So thanks for coming today, everyone. Welcome. We got Maureen from California. Excellent. Great. Well, we'll get going, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're here today for an EdTech Team Live episode uh, with Rushton Hurley, the Executive Director of Next Vista Learning, joining us today from California to chat all about making your school something special, um, an awesome book available from EdTech Team Press. Uh, today, we're going to walk through a little bit of the book with Rushton. He's going to ask some really great questions for the back channel. So this is interactive. Uh, so please feel free to uh, share your ideas, thoughts, questions. Um, at the very end, we'll have an opportunity if you're so inclined to come on camera with us and uh, say hi to Rushton, ask any questions you have, and we'll give away a copy of Making Your School Something Special, um, as well as share a cool discount code you can use. Uh, but without further ado, Rushton, um, how's it going? Thanks for joining us today. It's going amazingly well. I'm just totally jazzed to have a chance to do this and hang out with uh, with the way, way, way fun Wendy Gordon and all of these cool people who have joined in. That's really cool. Right? We've got people from California and Wisconsin and Arizona and all of these cool places. So awesome. Thank you very much for taking part and joining in with us today. Awesome. Cool. So let's get this a going shall we hong kong totally cool um by the way yeah i'm and from texas i'm so easily distracted okay so at any rate this is making your school something special i wrote a book wow i wrote a book with that title and it, it's all about the ideas that are a part of who we are as educators and how we make our community something that is not just great for kids but really great for us too right so this book uh, may sound like it's just for say principals and heads of school but no 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 this this is a book that that's really about it, about what it can be professionally what our what our, our settings can be professionally and so it's for teachers it's for uh leaders who are leaders of teams leaders of campuses leaders of districts anybody who kind of cares about making their school a really cool place to be personally and professionally so i am excited to share some ideas with you uh wendy Gwynn and go go forward one there. I gotta make my, my standard a little bit here. I'm really into doing all this stuff right. So if you're gonna see images from me, they're gonna be Creative Commons license or my own work or screenshots properly identified as such, these kinds of things. And so uh, if, if you're curious about that, feel free to ask towards the end, all good. Next one. Now, when I say you'll get these slides, let me say that that is not a threat. It is not a prediction of understanding. It is merely that I have a link that will get you back to all of these that I've put together, just because sometimes I figure people don't want to sit there and write something down that they see on a screen. So uh, if that if that's exciting to you, great. If not, don't worry about the move on. So so let's go to the next one. There's the book. Look at it. It's such a cute little thing. All right. So uh, I'm hoping that everybody here will buy like 10 copies for everyone they know. Next, and next. I threw the link in the chat so you guys can see, but um, it is really, look at it, Russian. Good. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I, you know, I, I'm, I'm nothing but happy about it. And, and it's, it's actually kind of a smaller book, which is kind of cool because it can fit in like your pocket or, or, or your bag, which is, which is kind of hip and cool. If you don't think so, don't worry. I just finished that thought. Let's go to the next one. All right. So uh, I am a former high school teacher. I taught uh, Japanese language for many years. Great, fun thing to teach. Uh, and then I became a principal. I was principal of a K-12 and then an online high school. Uh, and then I started my own little shindig, which is what, what the icon or the, the image on the screen is. That's Next Vista for Learning. Next Vista is, is my own little attempt to save the world from, uh, from ignorance, one creative video at a time. So it's a, it's a library of videos by and for teachers and students everywhere. 
and uh, they're free to use, free to contribute to, free to download from, I and mean, all of this kind of stuff, all for a student audience, all screen content. We've got about 2,000 videos from uh, around the world on the site. And if you think, oh, you know, I'd love to have my kids making videos that, that should be on that site, then talk to me. We'll be happy to explore that. Let's go to the next one. When's your next uh, film festival that you got coming up, Rushton? You know, we've actually got a deadline coming up on Saturday for our, our, our kind of most common, like two or three times a year, we do what's called uh, the 90 second video contest, where in 90 seconds or less, you, you creatively explain something one might encounter in school. And we've, we've had a bunch of very creative, cool pieces come in from uh, all levels of schooling, uh, from lots of different countries as well. And it's great to share that kind of stuff. So happy to explore that further, of course, if, if people want. So what this slide is, so you're now you're seeing a slide, uh, or two people are walking a dog, or at least, uh, let's see, and, and Wendy, is, is everybody seeing that, or, or just me, how does that work? Everyone should see it, if you guys want to let us know in chat, does everyone, um, I'm toggling back and forth between Rushton and the slide, yeah. um, and let me know, Lori or Eric or Andrea, um, if you guys can see it okay. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, so yeah, all good there. Now, what that is, is imagine that you're out watching, walking your dog, you're walking your dog, and as, as you're walking along, somebody else comes up with a dog and a kid. So you stop and talk to this person because, you know, you're a friendly type of human being and, and you get to talking and the person learns that you work at the school where you work. And, and they're like, oh, that's cool. You know, little, little Chris here is somebody we were thinking about sending to your school. And so, you know, Chris says, oh, you know, you work at that school. Yeah. The parent then looks at you and asks this question. What makes your school special? Now, that's an interesting question, and we often answer it badly. Next slide. Uh, we answer it badly in the sense that often we, we don't really say what they need to hear. We need to give them answers that work for them. Next slide. And, 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 and that means that we're not doing things like saying, uh, uh, and go ahead and go to the next slide there. We're not saying things such as, we really care about children. You know, I mean, that, that's such a nice thing to say, isn't it? I mean, like at our school, we care about children, but like, that's true for everybody, right? Next slide. Because you don't figure that there are, are places out there where they, they're traumatizing the kids left, right, and center. Is that just, that, you're, not, you're not distinguishing your school in any, in any way. Next slide. Now, when we, when we think about what, what makes a school special, we're really talking about what kids will experience there. What do they do, right? So I put this slide up because at the school where I first taught uh, in San Jose, California, uh, they had uh, this, this really cool program, uh, an environmental science program, still have it. And this, this guy takes a group of students down to Death Valley every year for like five days of hiking and camping and environmental science research, which is cool. So if you're trying to get that sense of, okay, well, you know, what's special about this school? To be able to say something like, our students do this, we go on this trip. That's pretty interesting. So it's something that the kid would do. Wendy, let's, let's look at the next one. Uh, at another school where I've worked, uh, one of the things that happened is that the students there would, would get to know charities in their community and they would make videos telling the stories of those charities. So, so they get to know, you know, oh, these people are doing these things and that's really cool. And, and not only is it interesting for the kids learning that it's you know, important that people get out and you know, find ways to, to you know, serve others and they get joy and meaning from that, things like that. But that can be really good for the charities as well, right? Because, uh, you know, charities are underfunded, understaffed, overworked crowds generally. And, uh, and having com some students come along and say, well, you know, we'd, you know, we'd like to make a video about what you do so you can tell your story and maybe get some more volunteers and support. No brainer, you know, kind of response on that front. So, so when, when a, a parent is imagining a child doing something, oh, my, my kid loves to make videos. I hope, can my kid get involved with that? They're really asking that question. When, when they say, what's special about your school? They want to know what their kid will do. What is it they'll do? What is it that'll make the kid, the, the kid go, I want to do that? What is it that'll make the parent go, I want my kid to do that? So let's go to the next slide and, and kind of open up the first question to the group, which is, uh, as you'd expect, what makes your, your school special? Now, speak in those terms, like what is it that kids do at your school that, that you know, is, is the kind of thing that, that people go, oh, that's so awesome that, that you guys do that. It's so awesome that kids have that opportunity. What are those things? So let's add those ideas to the chat.
but visually I think I'm catching up with the uh yeah great introductions coming up in here Robin said yes she's used uh used video before uh -huh. you get to go to the cadaver lab and AP bio Rebecca <laughs> that's awesome hands-on learning trips to Germany yeah there you go let's see and so so Laurie puts into it our school is special in our ability to integrate technology in innovative ways right which of course begs the next question which is what are those innovative ways, right? You know, what are those kinds of pieces that come out? And, and some of the time, what we're doing is we're trying to get in that space of, uh, you know, anticipating the next answers, right? So, so when, when they ask a question and we give, you know, kind of thought on that, they're going to, they're going to then ask something else, right? So, oh, really? Tell me about the technology you use. And if your thought is, well, we do a great job with overhead projectors, that's just not all that interesting, really. All right? And so you have to be you know, kind of ready for, for that next piece. Uh, what else are we getting there? So we're getting some you know, media club. That's yeah, cool. We'll do that with the et cetera. Camping. Ooh, Robin's in. got room to implement ideas and experiments. That's awesome, Robin. Yeah, I mean, and and... And obviously, any clued-in parent is is going to be is going to be really jazzed about the idea that the communication at the school between the teachers and the the administration is such that cool things are are allowed to happen. We'll speak to that in much more detail here in just a minute. Student and I love D is that sometimes yeah, it's just sorry. the simple things. Like my six-year-old daughter says that our school allows for students to talk and share in class. You know, it's this. That, that culture for sure Russian I think is um, sometimes not a huge huge thing or a piece of a curriculum or anything but it's that a uh, culture for sure so true cool good stuff Eric for sure an innovation team Eric good to see you again by the way so so yeah so let, let's take let's take those ideas there are all of these cool things that are out there as you see this kind of stuff appear in a chat as well there is kind of this sense of okay well you know what is it was it that our, our school is doing um, what is it that we're doing that that didn't come directly to mind, you know, as like the first answer, but it's the kind of thing to work could get there, you know. So, so questions like that can be good as well. So let's let's move forward uh, in the slides. And and this is the, you know when I when I talk about chess, you know, I'm really thinking about okay, what are the moves that we're making here? So so when we do something interesting in our classrooms does it become something that that generates something else are we able to kind of set up possibilities going forward this way when a parent asks what's special about your school and you give an answer that next question that they ask you're engaged in that same kind of thinking and i want to have this all kind of revolve around the idea of what happens in terms of learning so let's go to the next slide when we talk about learning because as a school clearly one of the things that we have to be able to the cool learning. I mean, and I say that because there are schools that talk a lot, a lot about uh, nice things that they do that aren't actually um, learning. I mean, you know, so sports. Sports is important. Sports is, is, is a great thing for kids in, in so many ways. But that's different than the learning activities that happen. So, we, so let's, let's zero in on how does learning, you know, kind of get to, get to somewhere special. And we'll actually move backwards along these lines. So go to the next slide. The, the, the best kind of learning, this is, I have these four categories of learning activities, right? The best kind of learning is that first one, powerfully memorable. What represents as a learning experience? And, and so there are all kinds of things that if you stop and you think, what do I remember, right? What do I remember from my students? Toss that into the chat. Let's do that as well. You know, like when, when you were a student in elementary or kindergarten or high school or middle school or anything like that, your learning experiences so there were learning activities that really stood out in some way because you know once we're you know, once we're talking about those constructively we can really get into the space of talking about how we tell our communities about our schools as well aerospace stem academy too cool very cool I like it. We're already planning a school visitations. We're all we're all going to Lois's to to see her special. That's so right. much special happening right now. It's really awesome. 
teachers who were passionate about books that we were reading. And, and Laurie, I'll bet you can think back to a specific book as well, right? And so, so you know, something that happened where the teacher said, this is what I want you guys to do. And it's related to kind of what, you know, what was going on in the book. And, and it really kind of brought that together in some powerful ways. Student love our role in simulation. Oh, a simulation for Ellis Island. Awesome. You know, simulations where people are kind of acting things out mean, you know, that, that people are actively doing things. That active component is so important for, for what we remember. We recited the introduction of the Canterbury Tales every morning. I remember to this day. That's awesome. Trips to Mexico. Nice. Cool. Phantom Tollbooth. Ah, right, right, right. right. So, so in, in pulling some of these different memories up, right, you know, we, we, we very quickly get into that space where we think, okay, uh, you know, we're, we're not thinking back to, uh, you know, to just, you know, all right, who knows the right answer? Okay, good, let's move on. Who knows the right answer? Okay, good, let's move on. That's not what we're thinking about. We're thinking about things that happened in our learning that, that stand out. And I think that's, that's kind of how we, that's how we set our gold standard, right? That, that what we do when we're teaching become something that 10 and 20 years from now, the students say, oh, do you remember when? Now, that's, that's a lot to reach for. Um, I can give you like one example that I think really stands out from stuff that's available now. Go, go to the next slide, we'll take a look at that. Um, and I learned about this from the art class at, at, a, at a school where I, uh, I visit often. This is called the Memory Project. And, and this is one of those stories that, that kind of stands out. And, and, and if, you're, if you're listening right now and you don't remember this story, in a year, then I didn't tell it right. Okay, let's put it let's put it that way. So the memory project was started by this guy, and the guy uh, is, his name is Ben, right? Ben Shoemaker, and, and he, I think he's in Wisconsin actually. I, mean, I know we've got a little Wisconsin representation in the room. Very cool. Um, and so he goes down to Latin America to work in an orphanage as a volunteer for several weeks one summer when he's in college. Everything uh, about being in an orphanage is kind of intense, you know. I mean, you know, like these kids. They're not walking around with personal histories. You know, they don't have like baby pictures with them or anything like that. They're, they have the little, th you know, what little they have and they have each other in that setting and not a lot else. And so, you know, thinking about this idea of, of you know, what, what do they know? What, what do they, they think back to? What, what are their personal experiences? That really weighs on the guy's heart. So he comes back to the United States uh, and, and he says, you know, I'm going I'm to do something. I'm going to start this organization. So he starts an organization called the Memory Project. And, and what it does is he's connected with these people in different parts of the world who send, uh, who send pictures of the kids in their orphanages to him. So he's got all of these digital pictures of these kids in different orphanages and different programs. Those pictures go out to high school art programs in North America. Now, the high school artists then paint pictures, they paint pictures, right, portraits, from the pictures that they have. The portraits are sent back to his organization, which then sends them to the orphanages. So what you're seeing on the screen right now, and let, let, let's make sure that the slide is, is kind of the visible piece right now. What you're seeing on the, slot, on, the, on the screen right now, that is a girl seeing her own portrait for the first time. Now, when you think about impact for what you do, right, you know, what's happening in class, and and, and your students get, get the chance to understand that what they're doing can mean that to someone, they're not gonna forget that. And, and when we think about, you know, oh, we got a big project and it's a lot of work and blah, blah, blah. What is it the kids are gonna remember, right? So, so thinking about that as the gold standard, let's, let's go to the next slide and talk about kind of the next level of learning, go, kind of moving down the ladder. And that would be the generally effective. I would say that if, if all of the teaching we do kind of falls into the realm of those, those two categories, we're doing great. We're doing really, really well, right? Because generally effective means they're learning. You know, you assess their learning, they, they got it, all good. Uh, so let's take a look at, at an example there. I'll go to the next slide. And this is about student projects. So projects that students do. And, and that, can be, that can be not just effective, it can be actually you know, powerfully memorable if, if it's done right, right? And so they, they really get into this and they, they learn about these different pieces and they, uh, you know, really get a sense of, you know, I'm someone who knows something about, you know, this, that, the other. So, so when you do a really good student project and kids are, are really developing a sense of, I can talk about this, I, I can reference things that I've learned. I've, I've actually gone to some trouble to learn this as opposed to just, I've got it memorized, I can, I can show you that I do. And that, that's effective for sure. Let's go to the next slide.
Now, the weak but easy is the next category. Now, weak but easy refers to easy for us as educators. And there are any number of things that, that kind of qualify as, okay, yeah, that, that, that'll do for us. Go ahead and let's go to the next slide and take a look there. Uh, one of those, of course, is the worksheet. And now worksheets are a bit of an easy target, right? And, and you know, I realize that. But, but no one, when I ask, what, what do you remember from, from your learning? My guess is no one thinks back and says, oh, man, we had these awesome worksheets. They were the best. No. I mean, that's just not kind of what's going on in our heads. Um, but, you know, it allows us to say we covered certain things. I mean, there's a certain amount of, uh, of, of revision that can be useful, you know, when, when, when kids are looking back over content via worksheets. And some people do amazing worksheets. I mean, I, I leave that possibility open as well. But by and large, it's not the kind of thing that we look at and we say, oh, you know, that's pretty amazing learning. So, so when we think weak but easy, we're, we're trying to get away from that. And now, if I've told you that I've got four categories, and I think I did, and if not, I've got four categories, um, and I've given you three, powerfully memorable, generally effective, weak but easy, you're probably saying, ooh, well, weak but easy is the third, what's the fourth? The waste of time, that's what it is. And, and that's, that's an issue, right? Uh, it, there's a certain irony in it, because teachers are probably more stressed about time than anything else. Go to the next slide, we'll, we'll talk about an example of this. You can kind of imagine a teacher looking at a group of kids and saying, oh, everybody's been so good this week that on Friday we'll watch a movie. Like that's a good use of time. Uh, and I would say it's not. Uh, I would say that there are all kinds of problems with that, uh, such as let's not suggest to students that if they'll just be compliant, we can dispense with this annoying learning thing. Right. So like, that's not a good message. Um, and I'm not saying that movies can't be useful for, for educating. I think they can be wildly useful, right? But, but the question is what we're doing with them, right? So are you, are you doing the thing of stopping it regularly and talking about, you know, what we're seeing and, and how you anticipate these different pieces with the characters and things like that? You know, those, those are pieces that, that may or may not be a part of what, you know, people are getting the chance to experience, you know, when they're watching a video. So let's go ahead and go to the next thing, because that, that gives us our, our, our categories of learning there. And, and, and when we think about this, I want us to move into the space of really powerfully memorable learning activities become the stories of, of your school, your community. And if we're going to talk about what's special about a school and what we're doing is making sure that people are having powerfully memorable learning activities, you know, and, and these experiences to say, oh, remember when at their 30th reunion or whatever, then, then I think we're, we're in the right space. Let's go ahead and move on. Now, I'm curious what you've seen that you feel fits into the categories. So, you know, if you think about, you know, anything, and, and this could be, you know, kind of the, the, the top end of this, it could be the low end of, of the chain, but, but what is it that you've seen uh, in, in your experience that you would say, okay, and it could be something you've done, right, where, where you say, you know, I did this, it was, it was weak but easy. I've done this, it was a waste of time. I did this, my kids, you know, from 30 years ago still talk about it. Um, you know, what, what is it that, that kind of stands out there for you? So go ahead and add that to the chat and let's see what comes up. I see, uh, you know, from a little earlier in the chat, Heller saying um, that uh, students actually ask for worksheets. Students left to their own devices are very happy to do something that's just kind of easy, quick, and done. Now, if they were asked, okay, well, you know, do, do you want something that's easy, quick, and done, or do you want something that you'll remember 20 years from now as being a wildly cool experience? Now, they may doubt that you're about to actually deliver on that second piece. But unless we're trying, we'll never get there, right? So, so we have to kind of be in that space where, where they understand that, that moving forward is something a little, more, a little more complex. Next slide. So I want to talk about, about what successes are, all right? And so there are all kinds of successes that, that happen in your school every day. And often people just don't know about them. Uh, people don't know about them because we're not kind of in a mode of, of talking about, you know, what we experience as teachers. 
when something goes really well in our class, we often don't talk about it. Why? Because people will look at us and accuse us of bragging about being great teachers or something like that. Well, let me say that that's kind of a stupid way professionally for us to do what we do. Um, we all need to be kind of open to the idea that somebody's doing something great, uh, not have a fragile ego that says, free, fragile ego, this is, oh goodness, you know, what, what about me if they're doing something great? No. I mean, if somebody, if there's a kid in my class who desperately needs something really, really cool, and this other teacher has done something really, really cool, and I can adapt it in some way that will reach that kid, got to do it, right? You got to do that kind of thing, because that's what we're there to do. We're, we're there to reach kids in really, you know, interesting, powerful ways. And so we have to be kind of open to talking about the kind of successes that are there. Next slide. And sometimes these successes are, are just ideas that we have, right? So they stuff we haven't actually done yet, but, but it's stuff that's on the way. And so when you think about your ideas, often, often, you know, we have these ideas as something we'd like to try, but, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Uh, what if it doesn't work? Oh, no. I mean, th there's something successful about a school where there is, uh, there is an interest in actually trying things out, period, right, where people talk to each other. Hey, you know, how, did you do this? Did you try it? How did it go? What did the kids think? You know, do, do you feel like, uh, you know, it, it, it was what you expected? Sometimes it's particularly helpful to be able to say to your, your colleagues, you know, like, hey, I tried this out today, totally bombed. It was a complete loser of an activity. But I asked the students what they thought of it and how we could improve it for the future and how it could be good for their learning. And one of them had this amazing idea. And I think those are the kinds of moments we need, we need to have, right, where, where kids are, being, are, are kind of getting involved. And, and, and the message from us is we care about how you see this kind of stuff and how you, how you, you know, want to experience your time here in the class. You're not just here to, like, hopefully get away soon. You're here because we want to experience something together. None of us became teachers because it was like, oh, good, good, good. We can just hurry through the year and get to the summer. Ah, that's not why we're there, right? I think we're there because there's something that, that really excites us about learning. So, you know, maybe it's the, uh, you know, maybe it's the, uh, you know, the, the joy of music or, or it, it's the, the intricacies of language or the puzzles of mathematics or the mysteries of science, right? Or the stories of literature, you know, and, and history. Maybe it's that kind of thing, right? And, and, and I'm thinking that our, our goal is to walk into that room and have the kids go, oh, cool, about this stuff that we love. And what that means is that we've got to, you know, got to be willing to try some different things out. You know, does this work? Does it not work? I don't know. Let's try it. Let's see. And, and let the kids know we're trying things out. We're always trying to figure out how we can make things better because there's always room to make things better. Let's go to the next slide. Now, let's talk about how we share these stories. So if we're thinking about successes and, and we're now comfortable talking about successes and we actually generate them because we try things out and we talk with each other, that kind of stuff then, you know, how do, we, how do we pull these things together if, if it seems like it would be a little awkward to stand up and say, let me tell you the great thing that happened in my class this week. Maybe one of the things we do is we just pull out a Google form, you know, and if you've never made a Google form, you can go onto YouTube and do a search on how to make a Google form or a Google form tutorial or anything like that. And you can learn to do it very quickly. It's a beautifully easy tool. And, and maybe that, that form is something that just asks for the cool things that have happened in the last week. And you can talk about successes from the standpoint of what students do, which kind of gets you away from the bragging thing. Uh, but, you know, once, once people are starting to do that, like, you know, when might they do this? Well, say the staff meeting. So, you know, perfect time. You start in the staff meeting. Everybody fill out, the, you know, the cool school stuff for them. All right. You know, and they do that. Now, you know, I get it. Some people will say, no, 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 no. We don't have time in the staff meeting. Don't have time for that. Really? You don't have time. Why is that? Well, you see, we have a lot of announcements to cover. Really? Uh, a lot of announcements to cover. Could that have all been sent out in an email? Well, I see that's a nice thought, but you know the problem is they wouldn't have read it. Really, they wouldn't have read it, so they're paying attention to you in the staff meeting. That's what you're telling me. So you know, rather than going you know too far down that road, you get the idea. What we need to do is is have have our staff meetings actually be kind of those times where we're actually generating the stories of successes of our schools as well. And by capturing this stuff in a little survey, we're moving in the right direction. Let's go to the next slide. And, and what do you do with the stuff that comes in? You get it in the, in the space where people can see it. You can create a Google Doc that's, you know, kind of public facing. There's any number of ways to do this. You know, get it on your website, get it on Facebook, get it on it, it, all kinds of ways to do it. And, and what you want is, is to be in that mode of we're constantly pulling the good stuff in. And it can be big. It can be small, right? Big stuff. Oh, you know, kid won the science fair. Okay, great. That's awesome, right? Small stuff. 
you know, a, a kid decided that, uh, you know, she was going to get all of her buddies together and they were each going to pick up one piece of trash off of the, the campus each day this week just to make it clean. Well, that's great. That's a success. That tells you something special about the school that somebody might feel. That, what if it catches on? What if suddenly, you know, like people really take a lot of pride in keeping it clean? That can be something really, really cool. We just have to gather these stories and get it where people can see it. Next slide. Now, when I think of like really, really cool stories about kind of what happens at schools, uh, there, there, are some, there are some really good ones to share. And are you on, I say I'm trying to figure out if I'm just kind of behind at the moment as well, but, but I am looking for the, the dads and dudes slide. Yeah, that's it right there. So what, what are we looking at here? Well, if you bother to like, you know, work with the slides later, you can click on that link and you can go see a video. And let me tell you what this video is about. This video is about a special day at a school called Easterbrook Discovery School where they invite their dads and special dudes to come to school, right, and spend a couple of hours there in the morning. And so it's, it's this day where they really focus on getting, uh, getting, you know, dads and dudes there. Now, this is pretty cool, right? You know, they, they get a chance, you watch this video, the, 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 the dads are talking about how cool it is to be at the school and to meet the other dads and to, and to you know, read to their, you know, the kids and, and, and their kids' friends and get to know them as well and, and really get to see what happens every day, right? You know, one of the dads that, you know, says, you know, it really makes me feel like I need to come here more often. You know, how many schools are in that space of like, how do we, how do we get more participation from our dads? I mean, it's kind of a, kind of a normal thing that happens, right? So, so what we want to do is we want to say, well, here's this thing that's happened at this school. It's amazing. They've done this great job, you know, and, and at one point in the video, it shows like 200, you know, dads and dudes in, in, in the gym holding their coffee going, yeah, you know, and. It's moving. I mean, it's moving to see that kind of thing. Well, it finishes in a particular way. And uh, when you take us to the next slide, the very last line in the video is an event every school should have. So dads and special dudes, right? Dads and dudes on duty, an event every school should have. Now, I see that as interesting on so many fronts. When you think about your school, what is it that is so good that is so cool for kids that you wouldn't want any child anywhere deprived of that experience. So when you think about, okay, you know, like this is something we do and man, every kid should get this opportunity. What is that? Because we should be, we should be zeroing in on the very best things we, we do, make them better. We should be zeroing in on the good things we do and figuring out how to make them great. And, and that really comes from talking about successes, being comfortable talking about successes, talking about great learning activities, how might that apply in your class? Those kinds of things where we suddenly get into a space where we are people at a school that share ideas that help a lot of other schools out, that's a good place to be in personally and professionally. Next slide. Now, when we think back again to the staff meeting, all right, and so, you know, my, my, my next slide there with the, uh, the guys in it. Uh, oh, no, I'm, I'm, at, I'm, at the cool, I'm at the cool question. Sorry about that. So, when we think about what you share from your school, how do you do it? What are the cool ways? Now, I mean, there, there, there are certainly some, some good ways to do it. You, you send uh, newsletters home with the kids. Hopefully, they make them to the parents, and hopefully the parents read it. You know, all good there. But what are some cool ways you guys share what happens at your school? Let's get those things added to the chat. So we'll just leave that question up uh, on the screen there and see what people have to add. When, when you're ready, you know, just kind of put the uh, chat on the screen to see as well. All right, I like what I'm seeing from Eric there. You know, we're trying to PR the heck out of everything on, on Twitter right now. Yeah, and, and especially if, uh, if that gives you kind of a good sense of, you know, are, are we capturing a different audience with Twitter than we do when we send the, uh, the newsletter home, you know, in the students' backpacks or something like that? Now, you know, figuring that stuff out means that you're really taking it to another level. Our school makes short videos to put on. Yes, I, you know, I mean, it's sharing videos, especially if they're short, by the way, short, <laughs> short is really, really important in this context. Context. Um, so what we want is, is videos that people will share. People, you know, a four minute video is a long video. It's a long video. But a 40 second video that, that tells a story well, oh man, people will share that left, right, and center, right? Short is good. So you want to be in, in that kind of space. You know, in contact with newspapers, you know, cool, cool, cool. You're, you're working on Facebook as well. Nice. 
uh, uh, shared on social media accounts. Good, good, good. Explain to me the conservation of math. It was interesting to, of math. It was interesting to see learning and her ability. Nice assignments, right? You know, that that's something that kind of falls into the category of generally effective or, or, or powerfully memorable, depending on the kind of conversation that, that arises out of it, especially, you know, you guys are talking to each other. Maureen, you probably said to her, oh, you know, I really like seeing you explain this. You know, I'm really impressed about being impressed with them intellectually is, is, is different than, than things like, you know, oh, you know, I, I love you so much. And, and, you know, you're so smart, you know, just kind of said as a thing. You know, being able to really point to stuff so that they know it really matters, you know, that, that that's really, really powerful. Instead of teachers to make our school something special. Yes, actually, and, and this, this is kind of what this all is about, right? How do we get people into the, into the idea of sharing what they do, as opposed to I walk into my classroom, I close the door, and, you know, boom. So, so we want we want teachers to be in that space of saying, oh, you know, we're sharing all the time. We share stories with each other. We share the things that work. We share the things that don't work. We create things and share those things online. Uh, I'm I'm using all kinds of material that that I found shared by other people. Right. It's important because we need to be in that kind of in that kind of space professionally. You know, we talk about uh, you know, Eric mentions the growth mindset. Absolutely. And, and that's true for students thinking about their learning. It's true for us thinking about our professional development as well. Right, where, where we're kind of like, we can get better as teachers. No matter how good you are, you can improve. A group who's like, nope, 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 I am so good at what I do, there is no possible way I can improve. Well, I'll, you've got self-confidence, but chances are pretty good that you're not reaching every kid and every kid's kind of doing, you know, going off the charts with their learning with it. So, so let's, think, let's think in those terms of like, we can, all, we can always get a little better at what we do. Cool, and let's, let's head back to the slides. So, so I want to take us back to the idea of the, uh, the staff meeting. All right. So, you know, often this image that's on the screen is kind of what's in our heads when we think of staff meetings. Um, you know, I don't know who it was that said, you know, I, I, I hope when I die that it's in a staff meeting because the transition to the next life will be so subtle, right? You know, you know whoever said that, you know, great, great insight. But think of staff meetings being that way, oh, you know, four more announcements or, you know, or whatever it is, it, it problematic for so many different reasons, but, but one being we're losing just these incredible opportunities to, to share stories and experiences. Let's go to the next slide. So part of the, the, the thing that we share are these stories of the cool stuff. So th this is the kind of thing I was talking about before, you know, what's the cool thing you saw? And, and we get that out in front of it, you know, we get the answers in, we, we, we get the cool things out so that, that, that people are getting that, you know, into that mode of talking about that. Hey, hey, I saw that thing you, you, you know, put in the survey, that was really cool. In addition to, to these stories of what's happening, there's also the, uh, the, the possibilities that arise when we begin to explore together. And, uh, and so, you know, if you look at the, at the slide that says Next Vista for Learning and Resources, right? So, you know, when we look at that, is there's a lot of really good free technology out there. Uh, and, and when we're in our staff meetings, one of the things we really should be doing, uh, at least from time to time, is sitting down together and, and, and just taking a look at a piece of technology, some website, some app, something that we've never seen before, and, and in small groups, coming up with at least three crazy ways it could be cool for learning at our school. All right, so you take like 10 minutes, boom, get into this. What can we do with it? What's possible? What else does it do? Uh, how could you connect it to this? What would be a really fun way to do that? If teachers are doing that together, particularly if they're in groups that aren't just like their own grade level or their own department, you know, but, but really kind of, you know, tapping into the insights of different people from around the school, that's really healthy. I mean, really good things come uh, from, from people getting together and laughing about cool ideas. And why do we say at least three? Because that's a creativity exercise so that people are getting into that mode of seeing that by really pushing themselves, they can, they can kind of catch them, uh, catch some really cool new, you know, new insights on what they do. Let's go to the next one. Problem is that when we think of technology, when we think of all these different things that are out there and it's like, oh my God, all of these different things are going on, you know, so hard to keep up with all of this. Next, next slide. And, and, and we, <laughs> we look at it and we say, you know, it's just, it's all going too fast. It's just, it's just too fast. I can't keep up with this. Well, if you are watching this and you've ever thought technology is it's so intimidating, ah, I have good news for you. For you. Uh, next slide. And that is this. You know, uh, when we look at technology, 
it's going to be okay because you're not actually required to keep up with everything. That's the, that's the source of the stress. Oh my God, I can't keep up. Blah. No, don't worry about it. Just don't worry about it. What? You're telling me just don't worry about it? Don't worry about keeping up with everything. What you should do, what your job is as a teacher, is to find the, the cool things that fascinate you and that you want to try. So if you see six cool things, you just pick out two and be like, all right, that's what I'm going to work on. I'm going to see what I can do with kids with that. Now, now we're working along the right lines, right? Because we're constantly just looking for the stuff that will be cool, not something that takes forever to learn. That doesn't count, right? You only do that if you, if you have to, you know, like we have a new attendance system and we'll need you know, a week to train on it. Oh my God, you know, but, but whatever. But when we think about good technology, it's stuff that you can learn quickly. If you can't learn it quickly, set it aside, go to something else. You're not responsible for everything. Find the cool stuff that will, will mean something for kids who need something a little different. So, so let's go to the next slide. What I want you to think about is, is what's cool, right? What, what would be wildly, ridiculously cool for your school? Uh, and so, you know, if you're looking at, at this slide and you're not thinking to yourself, cool, you and I, different people, you know, way that is, because th there's something just, just way, way fun to me, uh, about looking at, at somebody doing something really, really different and turning a lazy boy into a vehicle sounds kind of cool. So next slide. And this is a question for the group. And the question is this, what is it, what is it that would be wildly cool? Right? What is it that needs to happen at your school? That would be just wildly cool. And you might say, I don't know that it needs to happen, but if it did, it would be off the charts hip. I use the word hip. Not everybody does, but then again, I'm older. All good. So let's see what, what comes up in, in the chat. All right. And let's, let's take a look and see what, you know, kind of where people are in terms of what would be really, really cool. Nice, Maureen. Instruction first, technology second, as it should be, right? Because any tech that doesn't result in, in, effective or powerfully memorable learning. I don't know how much good it's doing us. Just saying. Teacher Snapchats. Absolutely. You know, we're, we're teachers quickly getting some cool thoughts out there and, and we all get a chance to do something with it. Kids can teach us, you know, and they'll remember when they do. Um, you know, because because when, when we just ask them to be students all the time, you know, they're, they're just they're just doing their thing. When we ask them to teach, now they're pushing themselves and that, that can be stuff that, that really, really stands out for them in terms of their experience. Robin mentions that uh, they taught me some coding. This is one of the benefits of technology. It gives us the opportunity to, to get kids, you know, in that space where we say, I'd like, I'd like you to explain that to me. Wow, I'm really interested in how that works. Can, can you help me learn that? Those are great moments for, for kids. Uh, Maureen says we, we break out of our comfort zones. Yes, right? Because, because that ends up being more fun. You know, there's any number of things we could say about the, the good learning that can happen, you know, as, as a result of that. But, but I don't think it's, I don't, you know, I don't think it's professionally out of line simply to say we need to have more fun as teachers, you know, prefer it professionally, collegially. We need to be in that space where, where what we do is we say, oh, man, I got to try this. Oh, kids, I am so excited about what we got going today. I've been waiting all semester for this. Ah, you know, those kinds of messages are really, really powerful. Maker engineering spaces, Robin, awesome. Freedom to try new things, you know, and and we probably have a little more freedom than we think, right? You know, often teachers, you know, will say, ah, you know, I, I, I have to do this, this, and this. And even if you're under the, the, the rather horrendous arrangement of, say, a scripted curriculum or something like that, um, you know, it, as long as you quickly cover what you need to cover and then take the time to figure out what needs to happen to be really amazing for kids, then you're doing it right. Uh, teacher salons where tech can be tried and tested among colleagues. And I'll tell you this, ed tech team, has put out a bunch of cool books and they've got, and they got one coming up. All right. And I don't know when it's going to re be released, but it's called transforming libraries. And I've had the chance to review it. And I, y'all, y'all got to get this when it comes out because it is very much about how, uh, how the library can be a space for, for kind of research and development at a school, you know, in terms of, uh, really, really fun things. Rushton making house calls to our school. Ah, now, I'm pretty sure I would enjoy that for sure. Whether it would actually be cool on y'all's running, hard, hard to say, but, but thank you very much on that. I would like to see more tech integration or in the four C's. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. All right. Good, good, good. Let's go back to the slides and let's, uh, let's kind of get in the space of, of, of recapping our, our, our kind of main points. Uh, because when we think about, when we think about what's cool, right? You know, what, what is it that makes a school a special place? 
I think we're zeroing in on several things because it may have sound like I was just kind of going woo all, all, all the way through this presentation because I do that. However, and there are some ideas that I think are, are at least mildly coherent, and let's give it a shot. So next slide. First one has to do with with the nature of learning. You know, the, the better the learning experience is, the, the better the stories, the easier it is to convey to people what's really, really cool about your environment. And, and people may be like the other people who work there. Let's just say that. Next, uh, next slide. You want to celebrate your successes. Now this is this is what we do. It's 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 what we're trying out. You know, you know what we're what we're trying to see might you know be good for how we talk about this with kids. It's, it's the decisions kids make. You know, all of those kinds of things. Next slide. Um, we need to explore together. So the you know using technology to to explore in kind of interesting ways uh, is is a really good way to you know kind of think in terms of of a special place for school. You know when when you get together and use a staff meeting to do it right. Use time in a staff meeting to get these kinds of things to happen. Uh, you know, get get that get into that space of like, what could we do this? What would be really really cool? And and that gets us to the last one, uh, which is make the cool happen, right? You know, like talk together about what would be really really cool. Well, this would be really cool. Why can't we do that? Well, maybe you can. Maybe you can take little steps along the way. Maybe that's how you get there. What you don't want to do is just sit and say that would be great, but we'll never be able to it. Ah, you know, I mean. What? Life is too short for that kind of thing. So, so we have to be in the space where we're like, let's figure out how we can make this happen. It may not, it may not happen tomorrow, it may not happen next month, it may take three years. Whatever it is, if it's really, really cool and you want it to be a part of your experience, somebody's got to start sometime, so let's get it going. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. My very first slide, don't go back to the first slide, just uh, my very first slide was this picture, but you know, kind of um, grayed out a bit uh, in, in part to be able to better show the title. But in part because I, I really wanted to bring it forward at this stage. So, so what is this? This is uh, this is at a Mayan ruin in Belize. I went. I spoke in Belize uh, last April. Not a bad thing to be asked to go speak in in like Central America. Very cool. Anyway, and I was like, I gotta go see a Mayan ruin. And and I and I saw this and and took a picture of it. But my picture wasn't as cool as this Creative Commons license picture that's available. And and you're just like, okay, get on with it. Okay. So story being. This is the sun god, and, and, and according to the story, at the end of the day, the sun god transforms into the jaguar to go out and be able to hunt. So really what you're seeing is, is like, you know, the, the, the transformation of the sun god to the jaguar. What I'm saying is that this is that cool set of things at your school waiting to get out of stories. It's that cool set of things in your head and your heart that you've been wanting to do in the classroom that's waiting to happen. Will it go perfectly the first time? No. Is that okay? Absolutely. So just, just get in there and just start messing with it. See what you can do, right? Next slide. And you know what it is? It's a shameless plug. Wow. Bring on the slide. Yeah. Is there, you get it? Bring it up. Maybe. Ah, there it is. So, so I, I put a lot of heart and soul into this and I have tons of gratitude to EdTech team for saying, that's a story that needs to be in a book. And I'm like, really? Yes. So, so they encouraged me and I wrote this book and I hope that you will buy it and read it and, and enjoy it and stay in touch with me about it. Right. So you get into these ideas, contact me. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Uh, I want to share ideas with you. I want, I want to be able to tell others about the cool things that are happening at your school. If you tell me a story and I go speak somewhere and I inspire somebody to do that at their school and suddenly there are kids who needed something different, who got it because they were able to do something close to what you did at your school because a story made it over there, that's awesome. Uh, so give that a look. It's all about uh, great learning experiences. Uh, it's about sharing and fostering and sharing successes and about individual confidence of teachers and students, right? Go to the next slide. So, so that gets us kind of to the last, I think it's the last slide. It is, it is. It, it's the how to stay in touch with me. Uh, and let's also make sure that we get the, uh, that particular link into the chat so that people can get to the slides if they want to. And that gets us to about 10 minutes to, I believe. And so what, what I'm hoping we get to do, Wendy, if this works out, and, and, and folks out there are willing, jump in, right? You know, like turn on your webcam, let's get you in. You know, if you've got questions or just thoughts to share, not like a, a long manifesto, but I mean, you know, whatever, whatever you might have, let's get that sharing out there because, you know, when, when we have the really cool moments of, of working with each other on this kind of stuff, great things can happen for sure. So there we go. Thank you for listening to all my rambling. Here they come. Here they come. Don't be shy. 
while people are logging in, we had some cool questions come up um, as people registered. And so let me uh, let me make sure I, I don't I, I don't leave those hanging. Right. So one was, how do you balance technology and physical writing in a meaningful way for students? Right. Which, which is a pretty cool question. And I would say, well, how does writing become meaningful? Right. And, you know, you get into that space of like figuring out what different kids are going to get excited about and, and make that into a powerfully memorable learning experience by having um, you know, they're writing assignments. So it's less about whether they're writing, you know, in this way or this way, and more about what they do with what they're writing, or at least that's how I feel about it. All right. Laurie, thank you for joining in on this too. Hello. Hi. How are you? I am doing well, thank you. And do you have a, a comment or question, or did we just zero in because you were the fastest? I think you just zeroed in. <laughs> oh, well, that, that's all good. That's all good. Um, so what what I'll do is uh, Hi. Is, is open up to anybody else. And Chastity, Hi. thank you for joining wow. in as well. Very cool. Do you have a, a comment or question, or did we just zero in? We got Chastity in here too. Chastity too. Hey, Chastity, I just had to mute you, but you can unmute if you guys come in. Um, you can. You're, you're getting to learn Hangouts and a new tool right now too. But if you just click on yourself, you can mute and unmute yourself. And if you're watching the YouTube page, you may have to mute the YouTube page. Um, I'm victim to that all the time. Yay! Look at everyone coming in, Russian. Awesome. Hey, Maureen's in here too. Hey, Maureen. One of the other questions that was in the uh, the original set, by the way, was your message revision is similar to Mike Meadows' response to intervention. Intervention. How is it? How how is it similar or different? Well, you know, I think of like response to interve intervention as this kind of. Uh, I think I saw it described as a multi-tiered approach to uh, early identification of students with uh, certain kinds of you know learning or behavioral challenges. I'm really thinking more about you know what what do we see our ourselves doing as as a team so so when i work with my colleagues in my grade level or my department or my administration team what what is it that we're doing that that generates the stories that need to be told so so my answer to that is the response to intervention is, is is in many ways about what happens with individual students and and what happens with individual students can become the stories that tell who we are as a school Wendy, was, were there other questions in the group that you thought, you know, that's uh, that's that's stuff that we need to we need to toss in? Yeah, sure. Lori or Chastity, did either of you guys have uh, an example? I saw some great examples coming in the chat. Did either of you have a cool example or something that stood out to you um, from Rushton's presentation today? Feel free to share, and I'll pull up um, another question as well, Rushton. Uh, we did have Maureen thought, and she just popped out, but um, um, storytelling, and just, I think she had a question about how do you assess learning or how do you help um, help assess this just came up. So some, there, there's some, some real complexity, of course. I mean, we, we could talk for the next three weeks about possibilities with assessment. But what, a question I would have, is when you think about assessment that is truly distinctive in terms of a learning experience, what what does that look like? Um, and so, you know, the kinds of con kinds of conversations that can happen among uh, colleagues when when people say, you know, um, you know, we, we tried this, we tried that, we tried, you know, I was at a school once and we were talking about group work and and we got into a discussion about how you assess group work. And this guy who had been kind of like ah about tech the entire time said ah. Got that one solved, no problem. Really, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, let me tell you, here's what I do. If there's four people in the group and, and, I, and I've assessed, you know, the project itself as an 80, I let them know, you know, 80, four times 80, 320. Y'all get together, split up the points between you and tell me who gets what. I'm like, what? And you have the students like, you know, like <laughs> decide how many points they're gonna get? Yeah, because that makes them, you know, talk to each other. Look, wait, we all worked really hard. You didn't do squats. So we're gonna get 100 each, you're gonna get 20, right? I, Maybe maybe that does or doesn't work, right? On the other hand, uh, like anything, what really works is is the personal rapport that's a part of it. You know, if that teacher has found a way to explain things to students so that they buy in, if if the teacher has created an environment where students kind of bought into to trying some you know interesting ideas, there's a lot of things that are possible. And so so pulling those different pieces out from 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 anybody in terms of what works well for assessment. You know, some of the some of the very best 
ideas are kind of hidden away two two classrooms down and and you don't know because that teacher never talks about what happens in the class or and maybe nobody's asked that teacher forever and we need to be in that mode where we're talking to each other more about you know what we do and what seems to work really well awesome thanks Russian um Angela joined us hi Angela does your microphone work you want to say hi We'll pop in if you do. And if you're in the chat, everyone, you can throw in a question that you might have for Rushton uh, as well. We can answer those. Rushton, um, another question came in from Chastity, uh, who popped in the chat earlier. How, yeah. do you be how do you begin to foster this sense of wonder that we're striving for? Any first steps? I know you gave some great strategies to get going um, you know, with a form or starting small with a staff meeting, uh, any other uh, takeaways for just getting started um, to foster this yeah, sense so, of so one of the things that, that I have seen that works really well is, is to get people past some of their hangups about talking about interesting things. Uh, how do you do that? Well, you, you get them past, you, you get them past that by, by appealing to their heart as opposed to their head. Often their heads know what to do, but the heads don't actually do anything until the heart tells them you got to do this. And so, you know, short videos that are really moving in some way, you know, kind of emotionally powerful, you know, like the story that I told about uh, the memory project is it, you see that kid on the screen and you're like, wow, you know, that stuff really matters, you know? And yes. And, and, and once, once people are talking about that, that's, that's pretty big. Um, one of the stories that I tell in the book is about, uh, is about an experience I had in India. Uh, I was at a, at a conference in Mumbai, India. And, and while I was there, uh, I was talking with this, uh, this teacher from Delhi. She, I think, taught at the American School of Delhi or something like that. And, and we were talking about what goes on at her school. And, and I asked her about, about her leadership. And she mentioned the staff meetings. And I said, oh, you know, the staff meetings, you know, tell me about it. She said, oh, they're great. They're great. They're really, really good. I said, your staff meetings are great. She said, oh, yes. I always try to get there early for a good seat. I'm like, you know, this is this is staff meeting we're talking about? Right? Oh, yeah, it's great. And I'm thinking, okay, well, what goes on? So she explains, she explains to it. At the staff meeting, they called them the Bob Show because Bob was the superintendent who was running these. And this was only about four times a year or something. But what would happen is he would start these meetings and he and play like like a short video that that was really you know funny or moving or something, and, and then they'd talk about it. You know what what does this mean to us? You know what 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 make what does it make you think of? What kinds of things are out there that you know that are that are in this story that might be important for for our students? They talk through the, those ideas together, and doing that kind of thing can kind of get people past a reluctance to to explore in uh, in ways that that the school probably needs. Yeah. Awesome, Russian. Thanks so much. Um, great. Well, if you guys have any other questions, uh, we did have one come in. Andrea just asked, any other resources for finding these tools? Um, all of these strategies could be done with um, a lot of different things, Snapchat, Google mm -hmm. Forms, lots of fun things shared. But um, any other tools in particular, Russian, or, or anyone else who came on camera with us, feel free to pipe in. So, yeah, yeah, several uh, that, that I would, I would uh, point to really quickly. One is, uh, one, one of the very best is Richard Burns blog, Free Tech for Teachers, right? That, that's, that's a great resource for finding cool stuff. Um, the resources page on my site, nextvista.org slash resources is, is a place where you can explore and find some cool things. Every month I put out a newsletter with cool things that you might want to watch, uh, read, or try. That, those are my kind of categories of cool things, you know. So watch this, you know, worth watching, worth reading, worth trying. And, and part of the reason I put all that together is because I figure most teachers are kind of in a space of, you know, I'd, I'd love to go exploring and see what's out there, but, you know, I'm just trying to keep up with the time, you know, that I got. You know? And so, so having someone else do it for you is probably a good move, <laughs> I figure. So, so there you go. Uh, I put that out there and nextvista.org slash newsletter will get you to that. Um, you know, make sure that if you are not already involved in the EdTech team uh, global community, I, I don't, you know, I, I know you have to like attend a summit or something to do that, but people share all kinds of great things in that space as well. And by being able to just quickly see what comes in via, you know, via, you know, the 
the things that get posted there. Hey, I was trying to do something like this. You can see these fantastic conversations that happen and get connected to people who are really doing some amazing things. Uh, and yeah, so is there anything? Awesome, Rushton. Well, I know we're at the hour. Um, you made Robin cry, um, but I think a lot of people in a good way uh, and all sorts of other emotions, uh, all good um, coming from uh, this webinar today. So thank you so much, Rushton, for joining us. Uh, thank you for inspiring. Um, this archive will be available on YouTube afterwards uh, on this very same page. Um, so somebody mentioned they would love to spread this message. So please take Rushton's uh, advice and share. share if this story inspired you, please share this with one other colleague at least um, that you think this could uh, make your school special and share those stories. There's tons of stories of how all of your schools are special. So really appreciate the back channel today. Um, we, uh, Holly Clark, um, uh, from our EdTech Team Press team uh, has put in a code at edtechteam.press where you can um, get an awesome code, Live17, to get Rushton's book 20% uh, off. And it looks like a lot of you have a copy already as well and coming to, to share about that. And please make sure to keep the conversation going at EdTech team at Rushton uh, H as well. Um, share any insights or special moments that happened today on Twitter or online. Uh, and we'll go ahead and give a copy away right now in the chat. I will just choose someone randomly. Hopefully it's someone who doesn't have it yet, but you can give it away if you already have it. And it is going to be rolling down. And Janelle, Janelle Field is our winner today. She says, thank you, you inspire me. Um, Janelle, go ahead and either um, send us a Twitter direct message or um, you can reply to our RSVP and we'll make sure to get you a copy out. But thank you again, Rushton, um, Maureen and Lori and Angela, thanks for coming on our chat. Um, I'll go, uh, thanks for joining us, Lori. <laughs> is your school, your school looks pretty special behind you. Yeah, I'm in my office. I'm actually here at night, which is very unusual for me. But, <laughs> but yeah. that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. We stay late for Rushton. That's that's yes. our mom. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you all online. Thanks so much. Thanks. Bye.